is up risk takers welcome to the kill feed strategy i am pete i am a top player in the game of risk global domination i have a daily release on youtube and i stream on twitch almost as often you can check my page for the current schedule we're doing almost daily um if you are interested in getting better at the game of risk i invite you to subscribe to my channel and come along the ride with me for today's episode we are going to be playing a five player classic fix game starting with a neutral bot which is always a big pain in the ass and i wish that would be an option just like semi-auto it would be great if we could have a semi-neutral right neutral in all cases other than the open i'm in the fourth position settings for this game we're playing classic fixed uh classic map world domination expert ai and we start with one neutral um, fixed cards, balance split sites with alliances on. Fog blizzards and portals are off. I'm in the fourth position. In position one, we have Pozil Lobi from Germany playing as green. In the second position, we have an expert neutral bot. In position three, we have General the Harry 12949 from France playing as yellow. I'm in the fourth position playing as blue. This is the Bird Blintz account. I think we've gone 43 and 49. In the fifth position, we have Eviler. From Sweden, playing as Magenta in the final position. The orange player is T Tani, uh, also from France. So I see two French, yes, two French flags. We will watch out for that. Okay, a lot of concentration in Asia, and I lose a two stack. Sure. Sure. Hit my two again. Right now we are uh, hanging out live on Twitch with 128 of my friends. Magenta occupying much of Europe. No, Magenta moving. Into the middle of Asia. Oh, wanted to pull his stack over. That makes some amount of sense. That makes some amount of sense. Orange has the Australia start gifted to him and doesn't choose to take it. Decides to greedily put more material in South America. I don't think green interrupts that. Green just gets an easy takeoff of its four stack before likely losing it next turn. Asks to let magenta let his stack through to the 10 in the middle. Magenta won't do that. There'd be no reason to. Okay. Red's putting more material down. Cuts up with the nine into the four. No. Sits in South America. <laughs> see magenta exhaust a stack for no reason all right magenta wants the europe position that's fine if i can have the north american position and does let the three out the thing about letting the three out is that's it's a nonsensical play because there's only three there so he if he goes one two he's already down to zero from where he was so there isn't the option to let anything out Magenta wants to be my friend. Orange takes uh, Australia poorly, or not at all. 
What is Orange up to? All right. If green, if we see green ad go pop pop, that isn't really a good play, but it seems to be the play that he requested of Magenta. Nobody has a bonus yet. I think I wait till I get my trade and I, I hit some of this bot material because I can't really afford there being too much more bot in North America if I'm trying to take it. Let the bot block, brick up Africa or something. It does slow me down from taking a fucking a six stack, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I need that to not exist in there anymore. So my conclusion about using the neutral bots in... Yeah, so yellow contests me. No, yellow contests orange. Good. My conclusion about using the neutral bots in... Um... I hit the six. How weak does that make me? Too weak. We can wait. Let those guys use their threes if they want to. Give me cards, please. Not yet. So yeah, the thing about the neutral bots is if we have neutral bots in classic fix, then we mitigate the um, the leave return BS strategies. But the downside is this, right? You accidentally have someone not ready up at the open. Um, automatic bots are good in all situations except brokenly bad in three-player if neutral was open. But the game will eventually go to a three-player, right? That's a thing. So in fixed, when you get into the three-player scenario in the end game, someone can leave, the other two people hit each other, and then you have that bullshit fucking... Um, leave return thing that that the neutral bot really helps solve then it could switch to neutral yeah that wouldn't really make any sense like i mean i hear what you're saying but no one would do that that seems like something that wouldn't occur um would it seem the easy solution the way i'm thinking about it is you have the setting as uh semi-neutral similar to the semi-auto setup you have the semi-neutral bot where um in the ready if a player misses the ready, it's an automatic bot. But in in all other cases in the game, it acts like this. So we don't have pseudo blizzards, essentially. That's what this is. I didn't want to play with pseudo blizzards. This guy didn't, certainly didn't want... Um, it's the opposite of a blizzard, actually, because it, it blocks the territory, but it also stops you from taking the bonus. Let's hope he doesn't put another troop there. I don't want to have to hit a seven. Yeah, okay. I think I roll the six. Hope to get good dice. What is yellow doing? Yellow's play does not make much sense to me. Giga Fat Brain. Hey, Pete. You often say, I'm not the best player, but I'm not the worst, which I can't argue, but what do you feel your shortcomings are and what do you try to improve on? Um, my current shortcomings, the areas of growth for me are uh, messaging. So the the fact of risk being, oh my God, the he goes all the way around for Australia. Bro, bro. Orange and yellow are going to kill each other. I love it. So my focus is messaging. Um, yeah, lost four to a six. Not the end of the world. Um, because Risk is a very psychological game, and I'm kind of positioned now as uh, the most popular content creator in the space, um, I'm very interested in understanding the message that players are receiving versus the message that the community slash the game slash the creators of the game slash the content creators and everybody 
um, is trying to put out. We, we need to get people up to speed so that they understand and agree. Like first step is understand. Second step is agree. Third step is okay. If this is what is, where are we going? So that's my short answer to your question. The game of risk, um, my game of risk is not limited to numbers and colors on a battlefield, right? I'm, I'm playing a game in building a community, um, in building a channel, um, and I'm finding that experience to be very, very fulfilling and interesting. That's where my growth edges are. How do I communicate um, effectively and succinctly and coherently complicated topics? Um, like the ranking system and why the ranking system is broken or um, how great it is that we're finally seeing some improvement. Um, ooh, and he hits a six too. He gets better dice. How great it is we're finally seeing some changes. We're finally seeing SMD listen to the player base. What an absolute miracle it is. All right, yellow already blew their load. So... We also saw green not go bad neighbor. Green wants this little threat. Uh, clock's ticking to use it, I would say. Oh, man. Okay, so yellow pops orange. Takes Australia. If I was orange, there would be only one response with my 14 to that. And orange still has cards. I think yellow is really, really bad. God Awful Noob says, so basically you're saying... They should add a function that allows for autobots and neutral bots. Doesn't seem impossible to program, but I'm not a programmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I was saying. Thank you. To, thank you for summarizing it. There should be uh, an automatic bot if a player fails to ready. No Australia, no win, ladies and gentlemen. You see it time and again. See it time and again. I'm going to make it extremely clear that I will be taking North America. And that is your one turn warning, gentlemen. So Green should see that he has to use his five. Might as well explain it to him clearly. Use it or lose it, sir. Say attack me if you must. You want to get some, some spend out of that five? Maybe he didn't put troops in. Maybe it was just the plus two from, the, from having the cards. He had a three there. Yellow's going to be trouble. I'm sure yellow is going to be trouble, but I'm also wouldn't be shocked if orange slams them. Yeah, orange just gets a card out of me. If green wants to be a homie, green hits that, not me. Green really wants to be a homie. He hits all of it. And then, he, and then we are best buds. All right, you lose a five then. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. Yellow's going to be a problem. Yeah, well, yellow has a problem in orange still, and orange has cards, so. Jenna wants to be cool with me. Throw him another thumbs up. I like that. Yeah, he likes it. Okay. Let's see how we do with the North American position at 30 troops. Um, and Jenna's at 50. Strong lead. I'm tied up with Yellow. Yellow's been playing hyper aggressive. They're at 31 troops. Um, they've also offended Orange. Orange is next to set. 
do we see orange remove this pocket of yellow? That would be ideal for me. They set on the 17 hit hit and knock yellow out of this half of the board. Orange looks like they're new. They didn't see that they had the set originally. Shocking. You hit the 4-2, though. You definitely hit the 4-2. Oh, green takes Africa. Problem with orange is orange is the only player who didn't accept my alliance. And they have a 19 pointed at me. So the question is, do I want to strengthen the border? I actually think in this situation, I want to pull the border back. So if I do get broken, I want to be non-aggressive to fucking uh, orange, right? So if I do get broken, at least I don't lose the stack too. But yellow puts orange in the single position, so... It's not looking good for the orange player. I don't, I don't go passive. I actually go and stack up. I have a set again. I can kill orange for the three cards. 20 for three cards. Not great value. But I mean, having a locked player on my border is not much better. I see an inevitable war brewing between myself and Orange. And I see a solution. As unfortunate as that may be for their game. Ooh, and look at those dice. I am punished. I am punished for my audacity. Green says good game, meaning he's going to kill me? Yeah, that would make sense. I got a, Did I get a bad roll or was it just a bad move? Yeah, I lost 22 v 19. I got a bad roll. <laughs> Magenta staying out of trouble. Green's thinking about killing me. He's still thinking about killing me. <laughs> he decides not to. Great. Now we just have one big ass stack in Yakutsk. All right. Um, yellow can hurt me here. They want to invest troops in South America. Yellow quit. Yellow is now a neutral bot. Cool. I definitely set... Uh, no, you know what? I want the Kamchatka stack. I don't want to militarize the border. Between myself. And magenta. Alright, there's my claim to South America. 
about 43 troops. Magenta in the lead at 72. Yellow's in neutral bot, occupying on the Australia position. So it's up to me and green. We're now in a three-player game. So it's up to me and green to work together to beat Magenta. And Magenta's pissing away a lot of troops. On AIs, they don't need to hit, which is a good thing for us. Hey, Pete, found you on YouTube. First time in the live stream. Keep it up, bro. Great content. Thank you, Wasted. So glad you're enjoying the show. Ask Magenta to hit stack and essay. I'm not going to ask Magenta to do anything. Why would Magenta do that? Because they're bad. That was just a bad play. There was no upside for them. Maybe they're trying to not be scary, but that's unwise, right? I wouldn't give away equity in uh, an advantageous position that I built. Let's see if yellow returns. <laughs> to hit a six again. Yellow can still come back. That's right. Well, let's just make sure that if they do... Uh, Magenta would like me to attack green. You first. <laughs> I'm the weakest player. You first. <sighs> it's a bad four to five. I have a lot of armies locked right now. All right, Magenta's at 65, Green's at 59, I'm at 47. I am I'm a really good generation. Right now, I'm just trying to not be threatening to either of these guys, because they're both stronger than me. Hello, Peatman. Well, if it ain't the good old Peatman, what have I done to myself? Hi, guys. <laughs> Green should make that claim to S.A. Yeah, but I have a 19 in it. If he was going to do it, he should have done it. Didn't. No set on four. We're crawling back now. I feel like Green can invade me. If he does, he loses to Magenta. A pretty balanced three-player game. I'm still the weakest player, but I'm catching back up. Magenta puts me under 12 and fortifies the border. All right. Well, I know where my stack is going now. <laughs> you want to build up? I have to defend. Looks like they're agreeing to kill me. That uh, doesn't look so good. I missed your question, uh, Millions. He would like to know, with your impact on the game being very palpable in raising the baseline skill level, do you feel responsibility when making content to play a certain way? I.e. not suiciding after a bad play? 
uh, by an opponent for fear of that behavior becoming normalized to the masses. So, uh, first part of the answer to your question is yes. I feel responsible because of this, and, and I feel a growing responsibility because more people watch the show. Um, the answer to your second part of the question is, um, given that responsibility, um, how do I choose to exert my now potential influence? Um, so your example of not suiciding after a bad play, I have no problem with suicides in the game of risk. I think people completely misunderstand um, what suicides are and without the expectation of mutually assured destruction at every point, a lot of your negotiating power goes to zero. So this comes up again and again, but since it was brought up in a question, I'll, I'll make it um, as clear as I can make it. Why did I get suicided into is a question that newer to intermediate players ask a lot and grandmasters don't. Grandmasters know why they got suicided into. It's their fault they did something. <laughs> right? When you get suicided into, nine times out of 10, 95 times out of 100, it's something you did to cause it. I'm trying to be very slick and not militarize my borders. Just build up. I am now the strongest player? Yes. When 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 Magenta moved the twelve uh, troops to the twelve, I could have re-raised, but I didn't. Right? I'm leaving this army locked for when and if that break inevitably occurs. Oh, he hits the fourteen too. This guy is just pissing away his lead. Okay, he doesn't. Don't think Magenta knows how to push his advantage. Yeah. So to finish the conversation about suicides and risk, mutually assured destruction is a valid and necessary strategic component to the game. So in a circumstance where I feel like exacting a strategic move in a game, I don't want to be limited in my strategic options. Now, what a lot of people do that they misunderstand is a lot of people then project a game strategy um, component to an ethical component, right? I don't presume to tell you guys what you should be doing with your lives. Um, my job here, what I do with the show, is I talk about what works and what doesn't work in a game, okay? Very different things. I'm not interested to sit here and tell you what you should do. All of what I am doing is I am narrating my thoughts. I'm explaining what I see, what I think, what I see means, and then what I'm going to do about it. This has nothing to do with ethics. This has nothing to do with people's character. Why would you piss away your troops like that? Right? It has everything to do with a game theoretical strategy. So Magenta has decided that they are going to keep removing Yellow's troops slowly. I think at some point it makes sense for me to take South America. Green is better than magenta. And green is just going to let magenta keep pushing troops into a, into a dead bond. But I also think green stops me if I take South America. I'm in the lead at 103 troops. Uh, green's at 95. Magenta's at 101 with a set. Do they knock out yellow? No, they hit me. Okay, so we knew it was inevitable. You first. 
Pink goes all the way into me. Okay. All right, war has been declared. And he just takes a single of pink and passes. We don't actually see a break. Right. Okay, I'm now at 113. Still in the lead in terms of troops. Single stack pointed at magenta. Let's see if he backs off. He does. Excellent. Excellent. So I can reconstitute that border and and not defend it. That split was key. No set on four. That's rough. Now he breaks green. So this is the difference, right? A lot of people often ask me, they say, why would you leave an unguarded border? Because this cost green a whole hell of a lot more than the three troop bonus he got from Africa. It cost him 30 troops. I'm now in a really strong lead. I think green is good enough to still break me in SA, but I think he also breaks magenta. Of course I'm getting greedy. I'm always greedy, guys. Have you met me? Let them let them open it if they want to open it. Yeah. Does magenta hit green? Opens. Okay. All right, green sets with a four set. I have an advantage on green. I think magenta's bad. I think I just kill green and go into the 1v1. The numbers aren't quite there, though. This is an okay board.
Oh no, our alliance is over. I was hoping he would take North America. <laughs> I mean, I knew he was going to hit me. I knew he was going to hit me. But if our alliance is over... All right, three player endgame. I'm in the lead 110. Green has 86. Magenta has 68 troops. Green sets in with an eight set. Yeah, green's quite good. suppose I should start slidering now that I have so many troops. Um, if you guys don't understand what the slider does, um, Balance Blitz uh, rounds anything 85% and up to 100, and anything 15% um, and down to 0% odds. The way it works at large numbers is it actually can cause you to lose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 if you roll 100 into 1, which is just an impossible probabilistic, uh, probabilistic situation. So, attack pink. Yeah, you got it, man. You first. Um, so what you do with the slider is you roll the slider down to the minimum number to get 100% blitz. And that way. Yeah, I think I'll just annihilate pink this turn. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Come on. You know you want to. All right, let's get some good odds. You attack pink too, friend. Okay, we do see a little bit of an attack. That's all he does. Yeah. Keep going. More. Every little bit helps. Ninety-four to kill sixty-seven. I'll get, and then I'll get a double set because I'm holding the Joker. Uh, go like this. And of course, we're forced to trade in a Joker as our first trade. Oh, no. It only makes a cavalry trade. This is awful. I'm going to 10 and a 6. Or I can get an 8 and a 6. Ooh, that was a good roll. <laughs> I think I got him now. 41 to 31? Yeah. And I get the 8 trade. All right. We got him, guys. Pretty sure we got him. Set on three. Slider back on. No, the slider um, has now defaulted to full, which is for the best. We've been talking about a uh, way to fix the defaults further. I think what you would want is you would want it to default to 
100% to blitz. And then you can choose to monkey with it if you so choose, right? Okay, 27 to 31, he's going to equalize, but then I'm going to be able to push back. He doesn't open my five. Maybe he has a lucky set on three and the battle continues. We'll see how it goes. All right, I get eight troops. Forty-three to seventeen. If he doesn't have a set on three, this game is over for sure. No set? Got him. That is a GG. Well played, sir. What is that pathing? Oh, I see. Yeah. He breaks everything. Pretty good. Dude, this guy's great. I really like the green players game a lot. And uh, Magenta was a total, total novice. Um, they did a ton of stuff that was just like obvious novice play. They attacked me and then they attacked green at the starting war was with two players. They attacked the bot unnecessarily. Did a lot of stuff that is just an obvious tell that you're new. Seven v five is seventy two percent. So whenever you have over fifty percent, you are advantaged by balance blitz. In this case, didn't hold. But I have 32, which is a lot of territory. If he gets a 10 set right now, is it 20? Could still be battling. But no set on four. Poor guy. Oh, he does. Nice. Now we go. We get a, we get a big punchy punchy. 22 to 32. He's going to knock me down. But I can grind him out, I'm pretty sure. Yep. What does he do? He takes South America. Twenty four, twenty three, twenty two. So I'm at twenty two territories. He should hit one of these off the three because then I know because then I still be twenty one. It doesn't matter. So I still get seven troops. Um, I want to break his bonus. Do it this way. Eight, seven, six v four is seventy two percent again, and we lose. We get bad dice twice in a row. Yeah, bad dice. I know. I would laugh too, man. I would laugh too. Bad dice. No set. It is still possible to lose dice. He's trying to guard South America. Okay, he's going to split. Seven v three is a hundred percent to break. Uh, I don't get him under twelve, so he'll get an extra troop. And let's hope we have a set. I don't have a set on four. Okay, all the bad luck. All the bad luck possible. And that's game.
a good game. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Hope you found some of it fun and entertaining, maybe even a little bit educational and informative. If you are interested in getting better at the game of Risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and come along the ride with me. I have a daily release on YouTube. I stream on Twitch almost as often. I'm doing two, two, two novices and two beginners, but we do go up to what, 44 and 49 now? 44 and 49 record for Classic Fixed. I hope you all enjoyed. And until next time, for all of you on the path to world domination, good games and good luck.